Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Shadi Arafage. I'm a veterinary surgeon. This video is part one of our Diseases of the Spleen series. I hope this video will add to your current understanding of the condition in dogs and allow you to make an informed decision regarding your pet's care. Always follow the recommendations of your veterinarian or veterinary specialist closely. Today we'll be focusing on the most common cause of splenic disease, which is a splenic tumor. Now first, let's discuss the spleen itself. As shown here by the arrow, the spleen is located in the abdomen or belly of your dog. It is located on the left side of the abdomen and it shares a similar blood supply to the stomach. This drawing shows what a normal spleen looks like along with, with its associated blood supply. In the middle is a spleen with multiple tumors and the final picture is one of the spleen with an unfortunate scenario where the mass has now ruptured and is causing internal bleeding. If a splenic mass or splenic enlargement is found on abdominal ultrasound or x-rays by your veterinarian, they may recommend either sampling the spleen or proceeding right to surgery to remove the spleen. This decision, of course, is based on a case-by-case -case basis and what you're most comfortable with. Now, the most common scenario that we will see, especially as a surgeon, is internal bleeding due to rupture of a splenic mass or masses. Now these tumors or masses may be benign or they might be cancerous or malignant. Unfortunately, it is believed that the majority of dogs affected by this condition tend to be affected by cancer, with the most cancer type being one called hemangiosarcoma. However, there are many different types of possible cancers in dogs affecting the spleen, all of which differ in prognosis and behavior. The short-term and long-term prognosis will depend on how sick your pet is how quickly treatment is initiated, and what the ultimate diagnosis is. Now, benign conditions, or those conditions that are considered low-grade cancers, can be curative with surgery and, and with complete removal of the spleen. Complete removal of the spleen is called splenectomy. There are other cancers, of course, that are a lot more aggressive, being prone to recurrence or spread. Now, unfortunately, internal bleeding due to a splenic growth or a mass or a tumor is a very common condition. These signs can appear suddenly or they can appear intermittently over time. Some pets are very ill from this condition while others are not affected very much. Unfortunately, we as surgeons tend to see the sickest of the pets with this condition as the signs can be quite subtle or appear to occur quite suddenly. Pets can show a variety of signs, which include, and are not limited to, not really eating, having poor energy level, they can be vomiting or have diarrhea, they can show weakness or collapse, pale gums, or have a fast or irregular heartbeat. Internal bleeding of any kind is considered an emergency and warrants a visit to the veterinarian immediately. Additionally, the majority of cases with internal bleeding due to splenic masses or growth are considered surgical emergencies, and this is perhaps one of the most common soft tissue emergency surgeries that I perform as a surgeon. Now the goal behind the surgery is to stabilize your pet as much as possible, to identify the source of the bleeding, and then of course proceed with surgery to stop that bleeding from happening, which usually is removal of the entire spleen. Your pet will be supported through intensive recovery before, during, and after surgery as most pets come into the hospital quite ill from this internal bleeding. Now, of course, we are all concerned with our pets having cancer, especially the older dogs. Initial blood work performed at the time of surgery may not be able to determine whether or not your pet has cancer. In fact, most of the time, it will not show evidence of that. Chest x-rays can be collected before surgery to find out if spread to the lungs from the splenic tumor has occurred. If x-rays of the lungs before surgery show that there may be possible cancer spread, this may determine what kind of action you take and what your veterinarian will recommend before pursuing surgery. Now, a unanimous concern amongst dog owners who are contemplating splenectomy or removal of the spleen is whether or not putting their older pet through surgery is worth it. And there is no clear-cut answer to this question. What I can tell you is that the majority of pets that undergo splenectomy are middle-aged to older dogs. This typically is not a young dog disease. Secondly, it is a gamble regardless of what tests have been performed prior to surgery as to whether or not these splenic abnormalities in your dog are benign or malignant. And finally, if a disease of the spleen is benign, 
then most of these cases, surgery can be curative. This is still a decision that will require careful thought by all caretakers involved, knowing your own personal situation and knowing your own dog best. There are no medications that can help the majority of dogs with splenic masses or generalized splenic enlargement, especially if internal bleeding is evident. Typically at the time of surgery, a liver biopsy is also collected. This is used for a process called staging. Staging will determine whether or not your dog has any evidence of cancer that is spread from the spleen to other organs such as the liver. The majority of cases of splenic cancer, if they're going to spread, will spread from spleen to liver and then lungs. Of course, this varies on a case-by-case -case basis. As such, it is vital to know whether or not at the time of surgery there is evidence of spread anywhere else in the body, and although gross inspection of the organs may appear unremarkable to the surgeon, there is no way for the doctor to determine whether or not your dog has cancer simply by looking at the affected organs. We need biopsies of the spleen, liver, and any abnormal organs at the time of surgery to determine fully if your dog has cancer or not. Now, thank you so much for watching this video. My next video will focus on specifics of the splenectomy and as well as recovery after surgery. We'll also go into more in-depth about prognosis if your pet does have hemangiosarcoma of the spleen. I hope this video does add to your current understanding of this condition in dogs and allow you to make an informed decision regarding your pet's care. As always, follow the recommendations of your veterinarian and veterinary specialist closely. Please show your support by subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing this video with others. This is Dr. Shadia Rafage, and I thank you again for watching. Let's take care of our pets. Thank you.